thank you very much. And it's a, a real privilege to close off what has been an incredibly productive day, an incredibly inspiring day, uh, hearing from so many people with unique and valuable perspectives uh, speak with us. Uh, we began, of course, I think appropriately, with somebody who's recognized uh, as a, an exemplary leader around mental health in British Columbia, Dr. Santa Ono, shared with us his uh, courageous personal story and uh, then blasted out of here to go and spread it around the rest of the country in, uh, in Ontario. And I especially appreciate the work that he has done uh, on his own campus. So not only has he shared his stories, he's done something about it in the leadership role that he is to help uh, the lives of students at uh, UBC campus. We then heard, of course, uh, uh, Dr. Peter Senge, uh, who had, I didn't know what s systems thinking was either, <laughs> to be honest. I thought it was like a cabinet subcommittee that I wasn't a member of um, and was thankful of that. But uh, I think he broke that down rather well and really talked about how uh, we have to look at, um, we have to draw upon the strengths that we have, we have to look at how we can confront problems and we have to think about how we can make the greatest impact for the, a very, very large number of people and uh, trust in students themselves. Uh, to be able to uh, help give constant feedback into the uh, interventions that we try and make to, for them to lead better lives uh, and, uh, and transition into adulthood uh, successfully. Um, Monique Gray Smith was amazing. I uh, almost jumped up and tried to grab one of the books. I thought that would be bad form though. I, I... Let's see if we have room in our budget to get me one, but uh... <laughs> um, it was just incredible. Uh, both to talk about um, just the point about wisdom, I think that was one of, the, one of your best of many uh, fantastic stories within that presentation, and how it was something within the, both the young and the old, and you talked about that 11-year-old boy, and then you concluded with, I think, a very uplifting and hopeful uh, vision of what reconciliation should look like. And indeed, I'm very proud to be part of a government that uh, not only in my own ministry, but in every ministry of government is uh, committed to reconciliation and all we do. We just happen to be positioned to have a huge, huge impact on what reconciliation uh, will do to, uh, to change the lives of Indigenous and non-Indigenous kids in the years ahead. So thank you very much for being here. So, uh, <laughs> so we had a lot of food for thought. We had some fantastic practical examples from our friends at uh, School District 42. Uh, we have a lot of people in the room here uh, who will yet share their perspectives on, on day two. And tomorrow we will have more young people uh, to uh, strut their stuff and to uh, tell us about their lives and how we as grown-ups who know a lot, uh, supposedly, and, and actually do, but uh, how we can um, help them and understand them and, uh, and uh, hone our practice uh, to be more effective. I want to just conclude by a couple of things, uh, to say a couple of things about uh, government action. Um, we have worked very, very hard over the past 18 months, and it's an, it's an exhausting 18 months. I can't believe it's only been 18 months, um, but that's how, long, that's how long ago it was that we were sworn in. Um, but to build a seamless and coordinated uh, uh, government that will be able to, uh, across ministries, uh, help come up with an effective mental health strategy. And we've, of, of course, responded to some things that are incredibly urgent. Uh, Minister Darcy has talked about the opioid crisis. Uh, we have looked at uh, mental health responses in, in communities and in the school system. I, I was amazed that we had never done a conference like this uh, a year ago, uh, even to have the conversation to get the right people in the room. Here we have a room double the size uh, to, to carry that work forward. And we're making sure that all the ministries are working together, as I mentioned. And I want to give a couple of examples about that because we've got a, a, a couple of recent uh, announcements that we've made, including one today. Um, first of all, I know she's not here, but I want to thank Minister Darcy for taking the time to be here today. Um, she is a colossal force in the government uh, for mental well-being, and I really appreciate her as a, as a colleague. It's always nice to see one of your colleagues when you're back in their local community and see how well regarded they are. And I was in New Westminster with her uh, a couple of months ago. We had a groundbreaking on uh, New Westminster Secondary School, which is, gonna, which is gonna be a huge campus, 2,000 students, the largest uh, high school in the province. And uh, the uh, chair of the school district, Mark Gifford, I don't know if he's in the room here, uh, introduced her and said, uh, it's so great to have Minister Darcy uh, here and in power to be able to, to, to attend this groundbreaking. And then he corrected himself, he goes, actually, I don't think Minister Darcy's ever been without power. Um, <laughs> 
but uh, she, um, she has uh, particularly worked closely with my ministry, with the Ministry of Children and Family Development, uh, again, to bring that integrated uh, approach to how we uh, respond to the mental health needs of our population, our young population in particular. Um, last year's uh, conference was very valuable, I have to say, in terms of informing uh, the school-based component of a uh, cross-government mental health and addiction strategy, one that's focused on improving access to services. We've done a number of things to do that. Uh, early prevention, uh, we're doing a number of, of things to uh, help awareness and to help uh, those who uh, do that work, and to promote youth mental health uh, overall uh, in the community. But we have a lot more uh, to announce on that, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting back into the legislature. The cross-government mental health, uh, youth mental health strategy uh, will be announced by Minister Darcy appropriately uh, in the very near future. But I do want to give everyone uh, as a final thought for the first afternoon of the conference that um, the commitment to uh, a focus on mental health in the Ministry of Education is not confined to a conference here or there. Um, I want you to uh, understand that uh, the year 2019, we hope to use the momentum that all of you gave us last year and continue to give us uh, to, to make this a multi-year process. We are going to go forward with a focus on mental health uh, for as long as we need until we get better and better at it, until more and more young people uh, are able to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to feel that they have the supports that they need to be successful. So uh, take that thought away with you on the first afternoon of the conference. Also want to share with you that there's been a lot of great work done um, in, in just recent years, recent months even, around uh, the curriculum transformation, for example. Um, incredible work by hundreds of people to incorporate mental health in the K-12 uh, curriculum. A few years ago, we wouldn't be talking about that. It was uh, missing and conspicuous by its absence. Uh, mental well-being today is one of our key components of the physical and health education curriculum. People who are teachers and uh, involved in the school system uh, know that. It starts in kindergarten. It starts at the youngest age. And today's new curriculum is helping kids understand issues that they face, um, you know, recognizing anxiety and depression, uh, understanding that uh, major changes in your life uh, play a role in mental well-being. Kids go through sometimes ugly divorces, they witness violence, they uh, see all kinds of things uh, in their lives and um, they come to school where there are some grown-ups that may be able to help them when they can't get the help that they need uh, in their families uh, or, or, or their neighbors. And we know that uh, from surveying students, we talked about this last year as well, we survey them annually, that school connectedness is the most important thing in their lives, uh, to feel like uh, they have hope and to feel like they're part of a broader community. Family connectedness is important, but school connectedness is the number one factor for them feeling okay with their place in the world. So that speaks to how important uh, the work that we do is and how we should all be focused on making school connectedness our number one aim. And that's why the conference is really around school, community, uh, mental health, because that's where it all happens uh, for young people. The curriculum also helps... Um, young people get skills and knowledge about how to advocate for themselves, which is critically important. So um, they have self-care strategies that they can advocate uh, for themselves, that they understand that there are resources in the community if and when they need them. Uh, I want to say also that we're supporting the mental health and well-being of students in other ways. It has been tremendously helpful that in just the last 18 months we have 140 more educational psychologists in the school system than we did in the 2016-2017 school year in every part of the province. It's a result of the memorandum of agreement we signed with the BC Teachers Federation. We need a lot more uh, and we will hire them when we get more and we're training more uh, to do that work. That kind of specialist education instructor uh, position is very valuable and uh, one that our ministry is supporting. BC students are benefiting uh, from new school-based uh, supports that are focused on mental health promotion, on prevention, and early intervention. Um, we just announced today, and I want to spend a minute just explaining it to you, uh, that the Ministry of Education will spend a share of uh, federal resources uh, that uh, our province uh, has been allocated for mental health and addictions promotion. That This is money that will, has been announced for the next five years. Our first year installment today was to invest $3 million in the school system uh, to do a num number of things. One of them is around leadership training. The other is uh, early uh, action initiative grants. 
every, each and every six of the 60 school districts will receive a grant, independent schools will as well, and uh, you should have the 60 school district representatives who are in the room already received your grant letters. And if you haven't, Jen McRae is my assistant deputy minister and she will give you a grant letter tomorrow, but uh, uh, one of the important things about this money is that it's extremely flexible. You can use it for staff training sessions, you can use it for parent information nights, you can use it for workshops for students uh, in the school system, you can use it for new resource materials to be developed for educators, for families, uh, for community organizations, um, and, uh, and you can use it to support professional development. Uh, you can use it to start a new program, or you can use it to support an existing innovative program that you've already started, and I know there are so many that we can be proud of in school districts right around BC. So we want it to be flexible. It is flexible funding, and it will be available immediately for the district. So when you come out of here with ideas, there's a little bit of money for each of your districts to go and uh, do something with it right away. Um, with uh, access to new mental health programs and services, um, we want students to be able to get more help uh, when they need it. Uh, and where they need it. Uh, and with the uh, innovation skills and leadership that we're seeing in districts all over British Columbia, I gotta say I'm pretty excited to see uh, what we're gonna be talking about in a year from now, or nine months, we do the conference every nine months, right? Annual, um, what will that be, November, I guess? Uh, I, I don't wanna kill my staff. <laughs> but whenever we gather next, to see uh, what, uh, how much further we are. Uh, along uh, uh, filling some of the gaps and uh, improving uh, better services and using the, the peer contact that you have over, over these two days uh, to inspire uh, uh, each other to do what works well in your own districts. Uh, Minister Darcy also highlighted today that the uh, Ministry of Children and Family Development uh, under the leadership of uh, Minister Katrina Conroy has developed a new uh, anxiety prevention workshop and classroom resource called EASE. Remember the acronym? I don't even have to say it again, right? You've already memorized it and internalized it. Uh, everyday anxiety strategy for educators. Um, but knowing that uh, how prevalent anxiety is for children and youth today and the impact that can have in their classrooms, this is a timely uh, Made in BC resource, uh, an anti-anxiety prevention strategy that will benefit children throughout their lives. Uh, teachers will benefit because they will receive uh, resources and strategies uh, how to integrate uh, anxiety prevention uh, strategies into their everyday uh, classroom routines. And the EASE workshops uh, will be provided uh, everywhere at no cost to BC teachers, uh, no cost to uh, school counselors and other educators, and will be offered at two developmental levels, uh, kindergarten to grade three and grades four to seven. So the workshop and the resources are a result of a collaboration between ministries, MCFD in this case, uh, Mental Health Canada, Anxiety Canada, and other partners. Um, so, uh, there's one last thing I want to uh, highlight as we end the day here. Um, I'm very excited uh, as well that uh, we have been doing a lot of work on, uh, it's not a new uh, program, uh, but it's a vastly updated program, and, and you'll all be familiar with ERACE, uh, which um, initially was designed to foster school connectedness. It was about uh, addressing bullying, preventing violence. Um, it provides support to school districts uh, for critical incidents, for example, lockdowns, all those kind of procedures that a few years ago people didn't know how to do properly. They now, we're now looking at expanding it to address um, some of the challenges that students are facing that we perhaps didn't imagine before. So the focus will uh, has already grown and extended to uh, social media and cyberbullying, and I see uh, Andrea Sinclair here from uh, BCCPAC, who has uh, given workshops to over 10,000 parents with the expanded ERASE funding on exactly that, cyberbullying. Um, now it's gonna focus on mental health, and it will focus on a couple of other things. Uh, guns and gangs in school is a real problem in a number of communities around British Columbia, unfortunately, and the ERASE strategy is going to expand to, uh, uh, to, uh, to address that. So, uh, as a result, this school year, the province will be expanding ERASE, uh, it's going to be a better, more comprehensive resource. It's going to better represent issues that face youth in, in different communities around British Columbia. And uh, it, will, uh, it will, as I said, focus on gang prevention, social media, and online safety. And I think critically important, we've already started doing this uh, a year ago, uh, but we have to continue to do it so long as people want to 
uh, make an issue out of it, and they aren't ever kids, uh, the array strategy is going to keep supporting sexual orientation and gender identity uh, supports for youth in every school district in every part of British Columbia. And that's my commitment as the Minister of Education. So, You'll hear more about that. We will have formal announcements about the expansion of uh, a race in, in different communities. And um, we will talk about uh, improved online safety tools that will be available for everybody to use. But listen, I want to thank everybody for their energy, for their attention, for their ideas, uh, for being here, for taking time out of your busy professional lives. Um, I hope that this uh, opening day of the conference has been very valuable for you. And I know that uh, we've got a lot of momentum going into day two. So thank you very, very much. And to all the presenters and to Maria LaRose, uh, our expert facilitator, thank you very much. Thank you.